rabbit fish on right now. Never seen one of these. They're awesome. This is a fish. This is a giant. It's a smooth puffer fish. Look at the size of that thing. Oh, cool. Oh. Look at that thing. Yeah, it just deflated. But this is what we call a rabbit fish because they look like a rabbit. But the meat is unbelievable in these things. It is absolutely unbelievable. They are so good. And I'm gonna show you guys how to clean them and how to eat them, because they are amazing. I'm just gonna try and get the hook out of this guy. He doesn't bite my finger off. Holy cow. Oh my God, look at that, huh? Put your finger in there. So there's our rabbit fish. We're gonna put him on ice and I'll clean him later. Here's my rabbit fish. He's all ready to be cut up. My wife's really scared for me. They have some crazy teeth on them though. So earlier you saw me catch this rabbit fish. Now I'm gonna show you guys how to properly clean this fish without dying, without getting sick, and so you're able to enjoy this meat. Um, if you want to do this, I didn't tell you to do it. I don't recommend it. I've done this a few times. As you may have seen, if you know me, I did a video with Catch Em All and we did a puffer fish catch and cook where we actually did eat the fish and we lived we didn't get sick so i've been tried and tested with this rabbit fish it's a little bit different it's a bigger fish and it's kind of more challenging but in essence it's about the same thing and then you just flay it like a normal fish you just make sure you don't get any of the organs you wash it real well and that's really a key to it, just being real careful when you get down by the gut area. First off, you really want to have a nice sharp knife. This is my favorite knife. It's just a nice flexible blade, Dexter, and they sharpen real well and probably the best thing for what I'm going to do here. So just like with the uh, smaller puffer fish, what I'd like to do is feel behind the head and you can feel where the skull ends and it turns to the backbone. That's where you want to do your cut. So you just kind of slice right there. And you'll see with the skin on these guys, it's really flexible. In the end, we're just going to peel this right off. It, 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 you, you can see the way my finger is going in. It, it just peels unbelievable. All right, now. Now that we've done the slice, we want to go a little further. You don't want to go too far, but you just want to penetrate through the skull. Okay, we did it. It's done. So, we broke through the backbone. Now we're just going to lightly slice the skin and the meat. Same with the other side. Real light. We're not going in too deep. Now, you want to just go ahead and break that away. Now when I do this, I'm not cutting into the organs. I'm just barely making it through the meat. Now you see all these guys should come right out. All these organs. And this is all what's important that we get out. You gotta move that. Okay. 
Now, it's all out. All the organs are basically out here. But what we have to do, some of them are still attached. So you just go a little bit higher on your cuts. And you, you don't go all the way in, just enough to get that skin. And you just kind of pull while not rupturing anything or breaking anything off. And you're just slowly working your way through here because we're not, we're not really messing up or wasting any meat by doing this. But what we are doing is making sure we get everything out intact. The liver, the ovaries. I just don't even mess with any of it. It all just comes right out and it's not worth really messing with and trying to get every single thing out of it. Now you can really see how I did this. Everything is out. Boom. That's the whole shebang right there. So we got all the organs, everything's perfectly intact. You can see there's the bile. You know, the whole thing is right here. And that's what really makes it nice is that you can get everything out in one piece. There's no chunks anywhere, nothing like that. You just have a piece of meat now. What I'm doing right here is just going ahead and I'm washing the cutting board you used. After you clear the head and everything off, just get all the blood off. You never can be too careful. Then you're gonna do the same thing with the body. Just rinse it real good. Just get everything off, get all the blood off. I just like to go through it and make sure that everything's clean and good. Okay. Now that you've got the body taken care of, I'm going to show you how easily this peels. You just literally get a hold of this. You can use a fork. You can use pliers. You can use whatever you want to do. But just getting over the uh, fin here is usually the hard part. Once you're over the fin, just kind of pull. Okay, well, I'm going to get this fin too. But once you're over the fin, you just kind of pull on it. Oh, you slid away. And there you go. There is your rabbit fish. That's a whole piece of meat right there that's ready to be filleted or you can cook it whole. Whatever you want to do. But that's just one awesome chunk of meat. And there's the skin. So now we've got our plug, and this is like a big giant drumstick basically. You can, you can cook it whole, or you can fillet it, or you can even steak it. I don't recommend cooking it with the bone or anything because, you know, it's just not worth taking the chance. What I'll do is I'll fillet it right now and show you guys how simple that is. Just like any other fish, you start right above the backbone or right along the backbone. wearing a glove because I got got a little cut on my hand playing a snook yesterday and I didn't want to take any chances with this puffer fish but there you go there's your slab of meat that comes off of it it's, it's really good I mean they always have this little weird red part on the back it, it actually peels right off but all the rest of it's really white and awesome stuff Go right along the backbone. I mean, the, the slab of meat that comes off here is really actually pretty impressive. Nothing fancy. Just 
fillet it like you would any other fish at this point. There we go. That is done. You can just trim this off if you're freaked out by it. It's not a big deal. It's just, uh, I think it's like a muscle for the fin or something. I'm not sure. They always have this as part of it. If you don't like it, they, they trim it off. Don't blame them. All right, now we got that trimmed. You can kind of feel around for bones, anything you've missed. But for the most part, that is a great piece of meat. So next, let's cook this stuff up. I'm excited. I'm excited to die. I'm just kidding, I'm not gonna die. It's gonna taste really good, and I think that everyone will be really impressed when they see the finished product. It's gonna look awesome, it's gonna taste awesome, and it's super fresh. It's, it's a rare thing. I don't find these very often. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm really excited. So let's do this. Alright, All right, I'm here with my rabbit fish. Smooth puffer. And I'm going to cook it up and we're going to taste it out and see what it tastes like. We'll see if I live through this. You never know. All right, first thing we're going to do, we're just going to add a little bit of olive oil. Because we're going to saute this fish. Set the fish in. It's hot. It's sizzling. And, and this stuff usually curls up like lobster. It curls. So you'll see it curling up already. I'm just going to flip it. It's a thick piece. I might have to cut this a little thinner. So it was a little thick. It's going to take way too long to cook that thickness. So I'm just going to cut it a little bit thinner just so that we're not here all day cooking. And I like to roll it in the olive oil. Alright, we're going to add some Onion powder, just a little sprinkle, nothing crazy. Now that the olive oil is on the fish, it'll help it stick a little better. Garlic powder, just a little bit. And then some cayenne pepper. I'm just gonna let it simmer for a little bit, flip it over as it, as it cooks all the way through, and we will probably be done cooking this in about 10 or 12 minutes. All right, simmering along pretty good. Just gonna give it a little flip. Looking nice. Browning pretty good. And uh, these are pretty thick pieces of fish though. So we're gonna let them cook a little while longer. We're on about, uh, it's pretty dark down there, but we're on about a little less than medium heat. So we'll give it a few more minutes. Just let them simmer like that. I just uh, cut these guys down into small little nuggets. Let them cook a little bit better, a little bit faster, because these are thick pieces. They're really thick and it almost looks like lobster meat the way it curled up at the beginning. And now, uh, now it's starting to cook through these little pieces, but a couple more minutes we're going to find out what it tastes like. Alright, it's time to take this stuff off the heat. This puffer fish is puffed. Let's just see how good this stuff is and if it's really worth the risk. Alright. Let's see what it looks like when I break into it. It's really firm stuff. And as you can see, it's white, but it's not pure white like grouper, but it has the, the consistency of grouper meat. It's really, really big flakes. Here, here goes the first bite. If I had to say what it tastes like, 
might say it tastes a lot like trigger fish. If you ever eaten trigger fish, you'd know it stands out differently than other fish. It's got a little bit wider grains and it's not delicate like snapper. But it's, it's kind of like grouper. It almost tastes like chicken. If I had to say anything, I don't think fish tastes like chicken, but this tastes like chicken. So this is pretty much chicken of the sea right here. Chicken of the sea. That's what we'll call it. Now that everybody knows how to properly flay it, you know how to cook it, you know how to skin it, you know how to take care of it, you know how to make sure you're not going to get sick, do everything the way I did it and make sure the meat's clean, you're going to be fine, and you'll have an awesome little dish to cook up and it's a rare thing you know these smooth puffers don't come around very often usually here in South Florida we find them in the winter time cruising along the beach are usually coming from the north heading south so if you're doing something along the beach you see one cruising pitch a bait they'll eat live bait as long as it's not moving too fast they'll eat a dead bait they'll eat a chunk of bait They'll even eat a jig or a lure if you just let it sit in front of their face. I mean, they're really aggressive. They got super big teeth, as you could see earlier in the video. And uh, they'll pretty much just come up and eat anything you throw in front of them. So if you see these guys and you're like, what the heck is that cruising on the surface? It's probably one of them. Thanks for watching my Catch, Clean, and Cook. If you enjoyed it, let me know. Um, I like doing all these bizarre fish. I think it's pretty cool because you don't see a lot of these weird fish catching cooks like that spot I did earlier. And... Um, I'm going to try and do more of the bizarre, you know, uncommon fish. So if you have any suggestions, I got a few last time. Some of them were funny. Some of them, uh, yeah, great ideas. Make sure you like and um, leave me comments. That's the best way to let me know what to do.